hello everyone today we'll discuss about physiology of high atmospheric pressure as we all know at sea level atmospheric pressure is 760 mm of mercury and as we go deep for example at 10 meters depth or 33 feet depth there is increase in the atmospheric pressure so one atmosphere increases means it becomes two atmospheric pressure and when the pressure becomes two atmosphere volume becomes half as we all know that pressure into volume is equal to constant so as pressure increases volume decreases various pressures and volume at different depth at sea level you can see volume of the gas if it is 1 liter the same gas has volume of 2 liters when the depth is 10 meters same things can be depicted here at sea level gas volume is 1 liter same gas at 33 feet or 10 meters depth volume becomes half liter because pressure becomes double same thing at 100 feet or 40 meters depth the volume becomes 1/4 now high atmospheric pressure is met under following conditions in following conditions we are exposed to high atmospheric pressure and they are deep sea diving when we are going under the sea in submarine and in cajuns work now which are the physiological problems physiological problems are divided in two groups one that is physiological problems they occur at depth and second physiological problems of ascent now physiological problems they occur at depth these problems are due to high atmospheric pressure when atmospheric pressure increases person is having caving in the chest there is damage to the face as well as air is squeezed in the paranasal sinuses and in the middle ear what are the causes of physiological problems at high barometric pressure that is because of increased total pressure from which damaging effects are because of increase in the partial pressure of oxygen and nitrogen now physiological problems due to effect of high atmospheric pressure that is because of effect of increased po2 effects are known as oxygen toxicity when anybody is exposed to high atmospheric pressure for example 3 to 4 atmospheric pressure at 25 to 30 meters depth now here the person is having oxygen toxicity which is characterized by following symptoms person is having nervous system complication in the form of disorientation the person is having dizziness person is having convulsion and if it is not treated person will go in coma what is the mechanism for the cns symptoms because of oxygen toxicity that is because dissolved oxygen increases and because of increase in the tissue partial pressure of oxygen this molecular oxygen is converted into superoxide anion that is a free radical and this free radical results in oxidation of polyunsaturated fatty acids which are present in the cell membrane and enzymes of our cell and that results in damage to cellular metabolic systems now chronic oxygen toxicity if the person is exposed to high atmospheric pressure for long period of time for example for 8 to 24 hours and the atmospheric pressure is 1 to 1.5 atmosphere the person is having bronchopulmonary problems and they are irritation of the airways this is in the form of nasal congestion the person is having sore throat the person is having discomfort in the substernal region also symptoms are sneezing coughing and the person is having bronchoconstriction other symptoms include pulmonary edema and atelectasis and bronchopneumonia may occur next are the effects due to increased partial pressure of nitrogen that is manifested in the form of nitrogen narcosis nitrogen has two characteristic features one that is nitrogen passes through cell membrane very slowly and second it is five times more soluble in fat as compared to water so nitrogen is dissolved in the cell membrane of neurons and it alters the conductance of various ions through the cell membrane 
and therefore neuronal excitability is reduced and that results in nitrogen narcosis. Which are the characteristic features of nitrogen narcosis? At the depth of 120 feet or you can say 4 to 5 atmospheric pressure, the person is having euphoriatic symptoms. Also the person is having impairment of mental functions and intelligence. At 150 to 200 feet depth or 6 to 7 atmospheric pressure, person becomes drowsy and poor muscular coordination. And at depth of 200 to 250 feet or you can say 7 to 8 atmospheric pressure, that is fatigue, weakness and stupor. And beyond 250 feet or you can say above 8 atmospheric pressure, the person is having deep narcosis and unconsciousness. Now, which are the effects due to carbon dioxide buildup? Sometimes at depth, there is rebreathing of carbon dioxide and that is because of absence of the apparatus which absorbs carbon dioxide and releases expired carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. And the symptoms are the person is having suppression of respiration, person is having respiratory acidosis, lethargy, narcosis and anesthesia. Which are the physiological problems of ascent? They are decompression sickness and air embolism. Now, starting with decompression sickness, this may be asked as a short note. Other names for decompression sickness, they are Cajun's disease or compressed air sickness or disparism or bands or diverse palsy. Disparism means effect of pressure difference between atmospheric pressure and pressure of gases in the body. Now, what is the cause for decompression sickness? After long term exposure to high pressure, for example in the deep sea, when any individual ascends rapidly to sea level, nitrogen is decompressed and it escapes from the tissue and, and the escape is at faster rate and symptoms are produced because of escape of the gas bubble and the symptoms are in the form of decompression sickness. Let us discuss symptoms. First that is bands. Sometimes band is used to describe decompression sickness and that is because of blockage of blood capillaries in the joints as well as muscles of the limb and that produces pain in the joint and the muscles of the limb. Second symptom that is sensation of numbness, tingling or pricking and itching sensation. This is because of presence of nitrogen in the fat depots that compresses nerve and produces motor and sensory symptoms. Another symptom that is paralysis of muscle which is also known as diverse palsy and that is because of nitrogen bubbles present in myelin sheath of motor nerves and that produces paralysis of muscle. Another symptom is chalks. Here nitrogen bubbles present in the blood capillaries of lung and that produces shortness of the breath and which is followed by severe pulmonary edema and if not treated that produces death. Other symptom is coronary ischemia or myocardial infarction that is because of blockage of coronary capillaries by the nitrogen bubbles. Neurological symptoms are dizziness, paralysis of muscles or collapse and unconsciousness and that is because of blockage of blood vessels of brain and spinal cord. Next is air embolism. What is the cause of air embolism? That is because of entry of air into the blood circulation and air enters following rupture of pulmonary capillaries, arteries and veins. And that is because of sudden expansion of gases in the lungs that is due to sudden fall in the atmospheric pressure. And manifestations are the person is having chest pain, tachypnea, systemic hypotension and hypoxemia and there is blockage of blood vessels of vital organs and that may result in death. Now treatment, how can we treat this decompression sickness. Now, treatment of decompression sickness. Subject should be brought to the surface slowly and subject is placed in compression chamber when he or she complains of pain in the muscles and joints and that 
is to dissolve nitrogen bubbles and recompression is done first and then slow decompression is done so that body can get rid of nitrogen slowly now for prevention of nitrogen narcosis instead of nitrogen only we can give oxygen helium mixture now why do we give oxygen helium mixture which are the advantages it prevents oxygen toxicity why because helium has lower density as well as smaller molecules than nitrogen and therefore it can be easily breathed also it can diffuse faster and it can be easily eliminated in the form of bubbles from body third advantage is less amount of helium is trapped with high atmospheric pressure because it is less soluble as compared to nitrogen and fourth it is less toxic than nitrogen and therefore it has one fifth narcotic effect so we can allow the person to breathe mixture of oxygen and helium